Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. Some of you may have heard that SpaceX recently-ish launched Starship for the third time. It's also the first successful-ish launch of the rocket. Elon did a presentation for SpaceX employees to go over their progress and aspirational, I mean, plan goals for Starship. Thankfully for me and other people who like space-related technologies, SpaceX shared the presentation on their X account. If you watch it, you probably missed that there was something a bit off about the number SpaceX gave for the third flight. And it's not good. Let me explain why. EMS has been talking for years about how good Starship and its previous incarnations are going to be. However, as things actually go with Elon Musk and his predictions, things haven't turned out the way he initially planned. <laughs> the timelines have gotten pushed, and the Starship system itself also lost a lot of lifting weight capacity until it reaches current incarnation. Or, should I say, aspirational incarnation. After SpaceX finally settled on this stainless steel design, the capability of Starships have started to get more and more fanciful again. I mean, just look at the slide from Elon Musk's most recent presentation. The almost comical third incarnation of Starship is supposed to have more than double the thrust of Flight 3 Starship, and the third incarnation of the booster is supposed to have 40% more thrust than the Flight 3 booster. However, what I find interesting about this slide is what's missing. What's that? The capabilities of the third flight Starship and booster do not appear to be as good as what SpaceX claims Starship is supposed to be on their website. If you look at the thrust of the Flight 3 Starship versus the specs listed on SpaceX's website, you'll notice the Flight 3 booster seems to be missing 460 tons of thrust, aka it's only 94% of the thrust, and the Flight 3 Starship is missing 250 tons of thrust compared to the SpaceX's claims, which is only 83% of the thrust. Both have good explanations, however. First with the booster, it's not that the engines are underperforming, it's that SpaceX is flying with some margin, specifically a 10% margin. That way they can lose three engines on a booster and still make it to space. All they have to do is run the remaining engines at full capacity, or a little bit over capacity. So running them at 94% thrust was no doubt to give them more wiggle room in case something went wrong with some of the engines. Like, you know, tends to happen with experimental engines. The Starship, we have to speculate slightly more, but I think it's most likely to do with how much velocity, also known as delta-v and rocket speak, the ship needs to get to space, in order to achieve its mission. Why bother trusting all the components if we don't need the delta-v? I know SpaceX usually does like to push the prototypes to the limit, but you also have to keep in mind they needed to demonstrate propellant transfer for NASA's Artemis program on this mission, so they had a big incentive to play it safe. The next and probably the biggest thing missing in this slide is the Flight 3 payload capacity. It just says NA. Now of course, we know it wasn't carrying a payload, and it wasn't even going to orbit, technically. But Elon did mention what the payload to orbit would have been. Flight 3 would be around 40 or 50 tons to orbit. What was that he said? Around 40 or 50 tons to orbit. Yep, 40 tons. Sounds like a lot, and it is for modern rockets. But that's about the same as their pre-existing Falcon Heavy in partially reusable mode. And let's face it, Flight 3 was always going to be completely expended. Falcon Heavy, in fully expendable mode, can actually carry about 64 tons to orbit. So, that's 40% more capacity than Starship Flight 3 could have done. So, is Starship way less capable than Elon Musk and SpaceX claimed? Yes. At least for Flight 3 anyway. But I think people have to remember what SpaceX's current immediate goal is. Get a working Starship into space, recover it, and the booster that got it there. So, no doubt they overbuilt the thing a bit, because right now the capacity isn't the important thing. Getting it to work at all is. And after it works, they will start cutting away the unnecessary stuff. They had a similar development path with the Falcon 9. The original was way less capable than the modern version. Although it hasn't improved in years, that's only because NASA doesn't allow rocket manufacturers to make incremental changes to rocket designs after it starts carrying NASA astronauts. However, in 2023, the Falcon 9 launched more payload into orbit than the whole rest of the world combined. 
They started by just making Falcon 9 work. Then, they refined it over time to the workhorse it is today. So, although the vehicle that launched on the third flight of Starship is quite a bit less capable than what SpaceX claims Starship will be able to do, it's not supposed to be. And although I think the proposed capabilities for Starship Model 3 may be a bit ambitious, I don't see any reason why they won't be able to achieve the capabilities they claim on their website within a couple of years. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon to get extra content and special perks. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.